here if you would like, come on up. Um, and we'll take just a moment to fill those seats in. Move forward, move forward. Sounds like everyone in this room went out last night. Is that right? <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to do when you're in Chicago, right? <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to talk about American Gods? Please welcome to the stage, Jitaidi Badakai and Ricky Whittle. You guys are both captains of your own ship here and <laughs> in this panel room. I love these big chairs. Oh, no, I'll just stand up here. I like to... Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Always the gentleman, right, guys? <laughs> I blend into my chair because I'm a bull. <laughs> Duh, bulls. That's going to happen just the whole time, by the way. Pretty much, During this. Yeah. I'll be mid comp Da bears. <laughs> It's you, gonna happen, I'm not gonna You lie. know what, I do give you props for the jersey though, because that, that's a nice touch, right guys? Yeah. It is, it is, you know, you know, I'm, but the thing is I am, I'm not just doing this for, for, for props, so I, don't, I don't just want you to like me. Um, <laughs> I'm actually a Bulls and Bears fan, so it, when I was in it, yeah, I mean, yeah, right, right? No. I, I have to say, I'm a huge basketball fan, and the Bulls had arguably the best team, like when it was Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, And Steve that's what Kirk, I grew up with, so... Phil Jackson coaching, that was like, we that killed was the it. best ever. It was amazing, and now we suck, and now I'm destined for the next decade of just misery, because well. the Bears and Bulls suck. But I'm still a fan, and I'm going to support them, even if we suck, because we're going to get better, and then we're going to start winning things, and then I'll be like, yeah, the Bears! Well... <laughs> I agree. But that's All how right. you've got to say it as well, isn't it? You don't just go, the, the bear, the bears. bears. Yeah. The <laughs> bulls. Also Is one of the best threats? Saturday Night Live skits ever. <laughs> really? I didn't see that. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't see it. That was not even a joke, but I got a laugh. You're, you're like doing the perfect parody of it, though. <laughs> um, Sweet. You guys literally just started filming on season two, right? <laughs> Woo! Thank goodness, because last no. time we talked, that wasn't confirmed, and now all of a sudden it's, it's happening. Um, so what can you, what was it like getting back together with the cast and, and the crew and the writers and everything? Well, as you can see, we never have any fun at all when we get together. <laughs> what? <laughs> but the, I mean, that was the main thing, was getting to see everybody again. It's become such a family, um, and everyone is just so excited to, to get going. Um, and I, I think we've been geeking out about it pretty much as much as y'all. Yep. <laughs> a man of many words. No, no, it's, it's been, it was great, yeah. Um, we haven't actually started filming just yet. We, um, we had our first read through for episode one um, mm -hmm. with our producers, um, yeah. so of, I mean, they're genius. But we've, we've just been blessed with another genius in Jesse Alexander. He's got an incredible resume, he's very talented, and what he's been asked to do in a very short amount of time is mind-blowing and yeah. he's just delivered an incredible episode which i know you're going to love um which sets us up for episode uh, for season two with a, another crazy cliffhanger where you're like wait what the flying shit no what <laughs> um but at the same time it's still teething problems and so we still got to try and get some things going on and the fact that him our other producers uh from from stars and, and freemantle craig like and stephanie, stephanie burke yeah. and and, and uh, craig Sigelski, um they listen to us all and they, they, you know, they, they just want to make the best show possible. And I've been a part of a, a terrible system that didn't work where you have a dictator just going, now it's my way or the highway. And, and like, it's, it's just too much micromanagement and everything. Whereas here, it's just such an incredible process where yeah. they wanted to hear all of our voices. You know, Ian McShane's there, Pablo Schreiber, you know, Bruce Landy. Neil Gaiman was there. Who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, isn't that... oh, gee, I didn't know if you knew who Neil Gaiman was. <laughs> I mean, but isn't he apparently that... he writes books. <laughs> he wrote a book from our show, based on our show. Uh, no, like he was there and, and just like, well, like literally for anyone who's never met him, mm. you're missing out on one of the incredible finds of, of our generation. He really is an incredible human being. And, He's the Shakespeare of our time. Yeah. No, he's, but he's, a, he's an unbelievable person. And for someone who's so incredibly talented and, and successful, he's so funny and humble and chilled and just like, just the nicest guy. And it starts from the top. 
you know, he's such a wonderful open guy and this is his baby. To give your baby to someone else and say, okay, you do your thing. And don't get me wrong, his fingerprints are all over everything and he has final say on like scripts, on castings and things like that. Or might not be final say, but he has a big say in everything. Um, it's hard to just let that go, but he does. He just, he just wants everyone to just be, you know, involved in this process of, of building this incredible show. And, you know, we really are blessed from the, from the very top all the way through to our incredible crew that we've got back in Toronto. Right. Um, and then our incredible fandom that is just, you know, watching our work and keeping us in a job. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to the book, obviously, the source material, Tidy, you were a fan, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, maybe that's a bit of an understatement. <laughs> a bit of a fan. <laughs> so tell us, yeah, tell us, having you know been passionate about that material, then when the series came about and you had the chance to go in and and be a part of it, what was that? What was that like for you to jump into your own fandom? <laughs> They're already laughing because they know. Um, it's, I mean, literally, uh, I'm living like the geek dream right now. Um, it was just, I mean, I'd read the book when it came out, um, and even auditioning for it just was mind blowing. Um, and so then to be able to go in, wait, do you have video, Ricky? He probably has video of me geeking out. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I have video of, because this, hopefully, I think it's this year, they told us last year that, that, that we we're going to have some action figures. I mean, I was very, I was very excited with my Lincoln Pops um, last year. Um, I believe Lincoln Reaper Pop is one of the most expensive ones you can get out there. <laughs> <coughs> Just saying. Uh, limited edition at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I don't think you can get them anymore. You've got to pay some big wedge. Um, I know that pisses off a lot of people. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were going to get some American Gods. Um, actual action figures like you know you know the ones like you know the real ones that look like us like for reals and I told you and, and she was like oh my god wait wait how, oh how'd you pose wait what um and I was like I go on. so I ran ran her ran like ran her I got to run the gauntlet like how are you gonna pose I mean what's Bilquis gonna do because she was like oh well what so you, and she geeked out <laughs> oh what because like Norman Reedus is like because he's got a crossbow so he's got to be like ready for like uh, and, he's, and he's got this crossbow and he's and he's and he's so he's just mm. but I was like well, you, you don't have a crossbow what are you gonna do she's like oh, she's got I'm something else <laughs> Just you know saying. what she's going to do. <laughs> I think Bill Chris should join The Walking Dead and just cure the world. Crossover. She could have literally just saved the planet. Thank just you. been like, look, I got this, guys. <laughs> I got this. No more zombies. I'm going to hashtag that now. Hashtag no more zombies. Hashtag no more zombies. <laughs> yeah. Bill Chris rules. Bill I mean, rules. I think we can get that trending. So, yes. Uh, Yatida is very much a, a huge geek and absolutely loves the world that she's thriving in and just proving what we all now know is that she's just effing awesome in every way. Dirt bears! <laughs> she is. She's, she's absolutely awesome and, and it's well deserved. She worked hard. Um, it's not an easy character to, um, to put out there. You know, a lot of people said it, uh, scenes couldn't be done, um, very famous parts of the book and our crew have done it and it's all down to an incredibly powerful performance. I mean, I watched, God, I don't know how many premieres and screenings I had to do before like the season came out. And every time I was in there, she would get a round of applause for the one scene she's in. <laughs> because it's so powerful. No, one else, no one else did. People got laughs and giggles and like, yeah, and, and oh, look, Shadow's first entry. Oh my God, it's Matt Sweeney. Uh, she got a, like a huge ovation like after her scene because okay, it's so I am blushing so much right I, I got, now. I, I can't I, even. I, I got more. And every time she's on set, she's so just like professional. She's always there with a smile. We even did photo ops yesterday. And I'm not sure which, which was the, you know, the bigger fan because she had this huge smile. It's like, ah! <laughs> But you know what's so interesting talking about that scene and that was your audition scene right. and I find it very intriguing as an artist your approach wasn't to like overthink it or go crazy with it I'd like you to share your approach you had in the audition process with that material uh, in the audition room I mean people always say how did you do that and I, I you know I think we know <laughs> <laughs> that's actually her gift that wasn't in the book she can do that there were other actresses that were up for the role, but they just disappeared during the audition process. <laughs> Brian and Michael were like, Sarah? No. Nope. Anne? Kelly? 
Alice. <laughs> uh, your tea leg. Oh, come, come in. <laughs> and that's exactly how it happened. Boom. Um, <laughs> Cast. <laughs> no, but it, it was very, um, it was very still, and it was very um, oh. focused. <laughs> And yeah, I say focused, and that's what happens. Um, but no, no, it was very still, and it was so cold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they are, they are. Um, and it, it was just—I remember that room. It was Michael and Bryant. Are you okay? Do you need? You are so cold. <laughs> cold hands, warm heart, though. Your two-day binoculars, ladies and gentlemen. Raise, raise your hand if you actually know what's going on up here right now. It's outrageous. This is pretty much us all the time. Like, I know. From the first day I met this guy. <laughs> from the first day I met you two day, we, 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 we had a good giggle. Um, and we talked about her co-star, Joy. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> and I keep talking about Joy, and she gets shy when I ask her to explain it. You oh, day. Oh, Ricky. Ricky, the jo joy Teats. was your creation. Teats. Uh, Ricky, <laughs> <laughs> uh, joy, he, he decided that, you know, uh, that, that, that Bilquis had really a co-star. Is, is that the, the best way to put it? Like the, the She's a the very lunch? famous part of the, the whole book and show. And I was like, she's going to be like massive and famous. Like, not since Sharon Stone has anyone, you know, and I was like, she's gonna have to have her own trailer. She'll have her own people. She's gonna like, and it'd be like, you see, they could use her as like an excuse, like to be a diva and be like, Miss Bedaki, can we have you on set, please? And, and she's like, yes, I will. And like an hour later, we're like, where is she? Joy didn't want to come out. <laughs> she'd be like, oh, your is so lovely, but Joy, what a bitch. <laughs> diva. I'm like, I was using it as an excuse. I'm trying to help, but you could use it as an excuse. Oh, you crack me up. No, but this is literally the first thing he said to me. I was like, okay, I guess we're going to get along just now. Yeah. <laughs> this will work. This will work. Um, but, but yeah, it was a, a, a very, to answer your question. Did you answer the question? <laughs> I, I don't think, I think we went all the way around it, but it was a very still, very simple, um, and, and that's where there was the idea that uh, Bilk was all, was all about human connection and that need. And then... Uh, I think there was one like redirect in there, and it was just uh, about this queen that had lost uh, this place of power and agency, and it, it just it ended up in tears. So that's really how that audition went. I know people had a lot of different ideas <laughs> of how that could go, but it was a beautiful, connected moment, and it um, it set the path I think for where the character has continued to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and just to go against the preconceived notions is right. what is so makes you so great as an actor in, in that moment. You. And Ricky, your casting process was a little different. I want to you, talk about it. You, were, <laughs> you almost were crowdsourced into this role. Um, my agents fired because they didn't get me this job. The fans got me this job. It's true. So but they did, they did for real. Um, I was in San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I was working on a previous show and I was uh, at an after party, which is not like me. I don't, <laughs> despite all appearances, I, I love my bed. <laughs> um, but I had to go. You've got to do the whole, hey, what's it going? Hey, can I go? Um, but while I was there, these wonderful people came up and they were like, oh, have you heard about American Gods? I'm like, no, but it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, you should, you should totally audition for us. I was like, yeah, I probably should, yeah. Like, no, you, you really should. You're like this. And they explained it all out, and I kind of researched. And I was like, actually, this is, this is pretty awesome. And I was due to leave um, the show that I was, I was on. And um, I sp spoke, like, reached out to my reps and said, look, can I audition for, for American Gods? And they're like, yeah, 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 sure, if you want. And they reached out to the casting department who were like, we, we thought he was tied to a gig, blah, blah, blah. blah. And, and so basically, I started my audition process. Um, which went very smoothly for, for five months. <laughs> One of the and longest I've heard of. 16 <laughs> audition tapes. Um, it started off in Vancouver, and, and I, I, the most weirdest one was a Skype audition. So I'm just like in my own lounge on my sofa in the morning like, hi guys, yeah, I got this, we got this in a TV screen, a little, little laptop, because I, I didn't have a fancy laptop, I'm not very technical. Um, that's why I've got two phones. Does anyone know how to switch to a 10? I, I, like, I, I'm still using my like 4G or whatever it is, 4S. Um, so I'm speaking to the director who's reading 
the opposite lines to me, like, and I'm reading like this, and then different producer heads would pop in. <laughs> like Brian would go, hi, <laughs> like Brian does, and Michael, and, and like Stars execs and Fremantle, and, and I, I can hear them all talking during the scene, and I'm still trying to like imagine the scene, but I'm like, do I act to him or do I act out here? I, I, it was just the weirdest thing ever, and they, they actually said, what you did was really quite remarkable because we don't know how we were going to do this. Um, <laughs> And, but I mean, it was, it was a massive thing, and they just, it was like X Factor. It was like I mean, American Idol, where it was just, there were happy scenes, sad scenes, you know, Sweeney scene, Wednesday scene, Laura scene. It was just a different dance every week. And to the point where you, it's quite demoralizing, you know, because as an actor, we're very insecure. And then you got to a point where it's like, well, do you want me or not? Just pull the trigger. I've done every dance. Um, and, it, and, you know, you, you start. And, I got to the point where I even started to let go, and I was like, look, I don't think this is going to happen. Because it happens in, sometimes you get all that far in, in, when you're auditioning for different roles, um, and you get so into it, and then it's, you lose it at the last second for whatever reason, and it's really sad, and it takes a while to get out of that funk. And so I've learned to kind of just let things go a little bit, and just whatever happens in the world happens. Um, and so I kind of let it go for a little bit, and then I got the role, and I was just like, oh. Oh, okay. My agents were like, oh, this is great. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I was so exhausted. I didn't know what to do. And then I put my phone down and I was just like, it took me like about a, like a, a minute or two to process it. And then to I be just, like, no more auditions? I was like, wait, what? And then I literally started running around my apartment, like screaming like a, a little girl. Like, oh my God, oh my God, I squee! And I was going crazy. Um, but the, 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 the most amazing thing was on the New York junket, press junket, where we were on stage and Brian and Michael, uh, sorry, Neil Gaiman was like, oh, his, his auditions were, he's so wonderful to, to, to all of us. And he was like, his, one, his auditions were fantastic and he was the best. And I saw eight, what was it, I think it was like uh, 600 tapes uh, for, audition, uh, for, for Shadow Moon. And he was like, there were 600, 600 audition tapes. And I was like, oh, I was number one? <laughs> <laughs> Out of 600, and Brian and Michael turned to him and went, we only showed you the good ones. Mm. Wow. There was 1,200 tapes. Oh, yeah. I mean, when they're casting, like, you know, such a pivotal show, obviously, based on a huge successful book, and then the, you know, the lead, that's, yeah. that's what happens. It was, it was insane, but as an actor, you don't really think about that, because quite... Honestly, you know, studios and people, they, they know the three to five actors that they want to offer it straight to. And, and then you've got the, the second tier of actors who get the ability to be in the room and audition and they kind of pick the best of the best. And, and you only kind of assume like, there's 20, maybe 30 actors tops in, for the, in, in the running, you know, from great actors to the elite or whatever. And you're just like, I'm just going to do my thing. But to hear there was 1,200 yeah. tapes was, was phenomenal, and, and it really was a big pat on the back and kind of made me... I wish I'd have known that before we shot it, though. Like, he told me afterwards, <laughs> you know, when, when I thought, do they like me? Don't they like me? But afterwards, they were just like, oh, yeah, you killed it. I was like, oh, I've got a job for season two? <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was a tough process, but um, I think I appreciate it more from the fact that I went through such a process. And it allowed me to work with Brian and Michael and David Slade, the producer, uh, the director for the first three episodes, to mold Shadow into the Shadow that you saw, um, because my early process was very much Shadow from the book, who was literally blank slate, blasé, flat, um, and just went along with everything. And they just wanted to make Shadow pop a little bit more on screen, so we kind of added a little bit more juice to Shadow uh, than, the, than there is in the book. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you I feel like she was <laughs> tweeting. <laughs> She no. was just like, I, I, I actually was like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to ask questions to these guys? If you do, raise your hand and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, and I do want to ask, actually, after that long, arduous casting process and you went back, did you then read through the entire book or did you take the character and just develop based on what was going to happen on screen? No, I mean, I started reading the book during that five-month process, and because my audition, my, sh my shadow was so much like shadow from the book, like, they literally mm -hmm. said, you're exactly shadow from the book. We need him to pop, because he's not going to be watchable. 
Right. Um, you don't want a man to think, you know, every week it's boring to watch. They needed a bit more, you know. So when he sees Laura in the hotel, that's his wife who's just come back from the dead. And as beautifully written as it was, Neil Gaiman's words are incredible and it's so romantic that a shadow's like, you know, dead or alive, my, you know, I'll always love my, li my wife, you know, she's my wife. And I'm like, that's so beautiful. But if a dead girl's in your room, I don't care. <laughs> You're gonna lose your shit and run. Anyone who doesn't run is a fucking liar. <laughs> That's terrifying. I've said this story before where I love, the like, most important person in my life was my grandma. She passed away. But if she came back, I love my grandma. But if she sat on my bed, I'm not going to be like, hey, grandma. I love you. Dead or alive, I love you. I could never be scared of you. I mean, yeah, she's not gonna hurt me or anything, but like, she's dead! <laughs> it's a, yeah, I agree with you there. It's a bit uh, so, unsettling. The, yeah, so they just, they, I was able to work with the producers and make, make uh -huh. his reactions more real. So he's, more, he's got more fear, more questions, more anxiety, and more, more anger and things like that. Because he, he very rarely got angry in the book. And so, you know, if th that's the one thing, like, I, I, who was it that said it? I think it was, was it Neil yesterday who said, um, information is currency? Was mm -hmm. it in the book. Was it, was, or was it uh, Brucey? Bruce Langley is the most intelligent kid I've ever met in my whole yeah. life. Yeah. He is tech boy, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so everyone's got this information in the, in the show and it's currency and they only kind of give it out now and then because it's so valuable. But Shadow's got no money. He's got no information. <laughs> so he's the broker's guy and he's just trying to keep up in this world of, of, of magic. Um, and so, yeah, we, we tried to make him more frustrated and more angry about that. Yeah. Mm. Did you have a question? Yeah, we'll start with you. What's up? <laughs> What's up, girl? <laughs> so, um, I wanted to ask what it was like to uh, be on the set of American Gods, especially with Brian Singer being in it, because I adored it, and I hope that everyone's fan of the <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, we, we love fangirls. I think we're, we're all fangirls <laughs> on that screen. <Squeeze! laughs> I don't know, you're, I mean, he's laughing because, yeah, I do hashtag squee a lot on Twitter if you, if you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, God, it was incredible. I mean, the first time I met Neil, I mean, for the longest time, he probably thought I was the weirdest person in the world because, like, I met, they introduced me to him and I just, like, stared at him and, and scurried away. Like, I couldn't talk to him. It was freaking Neil Gaiman. Um, <laughs> and, and the same with, uh, I mean, gosh, David was amazing. Like, I, I love the way that he storyboarded beforehand and, and asked how everybody liked to work. I mean, you don't always He's very that. visual, very creative. Incredibly He's visual. He's got a great eye. Right, right. And um, then you have Brian, who is just, I mean... I Could think... he be <laughs> any more... He's so amazing. Wonderful? Incredible. He's, I mean... I mean... <laughs> this is a fuller impression, if you don't know about him. I mean... Yeah. He's, he is. He is. He's, I mean, he's one of those pr people that he, he gives one of those real hugs... You know, the one that just like absolutely uh, engulfs you. Well, and, he is eight yeah. foot tall as well. He's a yeah, giant. He's, he's a giant. Man. He's a giant. Um, and speaking of hugs, I mean, it's just hugs all around on that set, isn't it? We love each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very loving cast. It is. it is. Anybody else have a question? Okay, hi. Could, could, you, could you ask me that question in two weeks and I'll have a very different answer for you. <laughs> oh. You could no spoilers. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Ricky, I'm sure they wouldn't tell. Right, guys? <laughs> this is between us and us only. And if you tell anyone, I will find you. <laughs> but we're going to House on the Rock at the end of this month to... <clears throat> to begin season two. So basically everything you love in the book is in the show, you know, and then we just expand, expand upon it like Bill Quist, like Mad Sweeney, Laura, um, the Jin, Salim, everyone is involved in, in, this, in this show. We, you know, we're able to kind of really flesh out what was an incredible blueprint in that book um, to make this show. But we will be at House on the Rock. I've never been, 
Um, Neil Gaiman wrote this insane, crazy place, like a word, like Disneyland on, on meth and mushrooms. Um, That's a good description. And he toned it down. He said, I toned it down because I didn't think people would believe it was a real place. So if this was toned down, I can't wait to get there and just to see what is going on. Um, but you'll see on my, on my Insta stories, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post everything. Thank you. Uh, Ricky, you're awesome. That's you're awesome! Sup, <laughs> player? Stop it. You, <laughs> you, you could be my favorite person. I'll boycott the movie if you're not cast. How about that? Right? We will boycott the movie. Um, no, I mean, I've, that's, that's, that's where I used to geek out. You know, your teenager geeks out at everything. Um, she's, she's the nicest person. She didn't even want to go to the toilet before this. She was like doing the toilet dance outside. Ricky, that's between and they you were, like, and me. They were like, well, we don't, we don't, we don't really have the toilet, any time for the toilet. And she was like, oh, okay, no worries. I'm like, your teenager, you're doing the toilet dance. You should really run now because otherwise you're going to be like dancing under the table and just be like, yeah, I'm having a great time. Why is she so like shaking? I am so mortified right now. She wouldn't right even now. go to the yeah. toilet. I'm just saying, did I just out you? She, yeah, yeah, she just peed outed. Before, she Sorry, peed before guys. this, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. She's a real goddess, but they still pee. Um, <laughs> and she was even on set once. Like, in, in the finale, she's, she's dressed as a homeless person. Uh, when she's down, when, when Bilkis is down on her luck. And so she's walking back to set, and she's such a wonderful person that oh, she, didn't even, miss a, she didn't even miss a step. She's walking onto set, and one of our, our PAs... Who's, who security, guards the sets. Security, security actually. Oh, security, one yeah. of the security who guard the sets and stop, you know, um, randoms coming on and, and stealing stuff, breaking stuff, finding out stuff, spoilers, um, was like, I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't come this way. <laughs> they actually thought she was homeless. So big props to, number one, security for having our back. Right. And keeping <laughs> us safe. And, and wardrobe. And number makeup. two, wardrobe. <laughs> Three, makeup. And then four, to the nicest woman who's like, okay. <laughs> Like, this happened to another member of cast. I, you know, it didn't happen, that didn't happen, but they asked, are you first team? Um, and this cast member went, what? <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> Read the call sheet. Like, it, they took it a different way. Um, but your TD was just like, okay. <laughs> and waited until someone like, like, was like, where's your TD? We've got to shoot this. And she's like, she's waiting outside. I don't know why. <laughs> She's with Joy. <laughs> Joy won't come to set. Um, but no, so, so superheroes is, is my thing. And like, um, that's, that's, that, that is my dream to be in that kind of world. Because I'm just a very physical, athletic person. I'd love to like, kind of incorporate that into, into acting. But I never get the chance to kind of run around with, with, with guns and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and so when people talk about that world with, with Spawns and, and, and Green Lantern, John Stewart's and those kind of characters, you know, it's a huge honor to even be in that conversation. Um, but, you know, it happened before with American Gods. Um, if it happens again, thanks to you guys, then, you know, pff, I'm going to owe you massive. You know, you just have to all yeah, come. Yeah, you're going to have to do something you just have major to come around for my house fans. and we'll have a big barbecue, <laughs> you know. Even if you don't like me, I, I can do vegan. I don't, I don't mind, you know. <laughs> It's all good, but um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a world I'd, I'd love to be a part so of. So a yes and a yes, so you guys need to make it happen for And him. you're now my new agent, Sol. Yeah, <laughs> yes, hi. Um, I have a question. So as you see the energy, um, I know that American Gods is so polarizing with the gold dogs versus the gold dogs technology industry. As yourself, what factions do you think that you back as, you know, in the normal? Oh. Just back the winner. <laughs> yeah, back, back the winner. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, I would say as an individual, I'd like to say that I myself would side with the old gods and, and, and you know, their ideas and the human connection and all of that and have a, you know, huge long explanation about it. But at the end of the day, we're all kind of, you know, we're in our cell phones, we're on our laptops, we're, you, you know, in our media. <laughs> Some of us have two phones for whatever reason. <laughs> um, 
you know, the, I mean, the, the new gods definitely have something going on. However, uh, old gods are old for a reason. Um, they're survivors, so uh, I'm going to take the goddess of love way and cough out and say I root for both. You're weak! <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Ricky? But, but she's right. No, she's right. At the end of the day, you, I don't believe you can have one without the other, and I think that's the whole premise of the show, is, is you're allowed to believe in more than one thing. You know, my God doesn't make your God any less real or important. Same the other way around. You know, we're allowed to believe in whatever gets us through the day, what gets us through the struggles and battles of each individual person. Um, I feel we're... We're evolving, we have to move with technology. I don't even know how to switch my phone to a next phone. Um, I, I skipped two phones because I, I just couldn't, I can't let go of the past. Um, <laughs> let it go, Ricky. Um, I get attached. Um, but yeah, we're evolving and, and we're constantly, you know, I, I live far away from my family and, and friends and stuff and, and FaceTime and things like that is an incredible thing where I get to see my loved ones. That's in, insane. It makes it so much easier, but at the same time, we need to remember the past and remember the things that make us human, that, that touch. Stop texting people when you're outside. I'm outside. Knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> come in. You, oh, you've not seen my new carpet? No, because you just text all the time. No, come round, you know. It's, you, we miss that human contact, that, that touch a lot, a lot of the time. And, and that's why sometimes I'm on social media because it's work and we have to. We, we promote stuff and, and it's nice to kind of get positivity out there because I believe in spreading love and positivity. But at the same time, if I wasn't in this industry, I might probably have just vetoed everything and just done nothing because I'm like, oh, you want to show me uh, your, your picture of your holiday? Text me. <laughs> you know, come around and show me your pictures. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just showing the world the people that you don't know, like, why, show me. You know, I, if I'm if I'm doing something, I want to tell you about it. I'm, right. I don't need to tell the world what I had for breakfast, but that's the kind of world we live in now. Um, so I think a little bit of both, um, but I mean. I have to pick, you know, the old gods because that's who I'm banned for at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why we love him. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I came up with a with a with the help of a, of, a, of a gentleman I met in Germany actually, where we started spitballing ideas, and I felt it was very important to, which might might align with you know your your God and other gods, um, but a God of beauty, um, because I feel we're so ob 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 you know involved in, in in all this technology and posting that no one ever posts a, just a plain picture. Mm. How many filters do we have? Everyone feels so insecure that they've got to stick bunny rabbit ears on just to make my picture look cute, or they filter stuff. I'm the same as well. I, you know, I'll take off a blemish or this, and you know, take off the spots. Blah, blah, blah. We're so absorbed in beauty that, um, you know, I feel that the way our show works is when you believe in something, you know, enough, it kind of believes them into being. So I think we're so involved in, in beauty and appearance um, and our, our concept of, of what is beautiful, what is not that I feel we would have believed a God of beauty into, into being. Um, and then what would he, she look like, you know? And, and, and how would they kind of move around this world? Um, or not, your tea day? <laughs> 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 no, I think you're on to something there. I, I think there's the possibility for a kind of um, gods that show up that are more of a symbiosis of things. Um, and I think it even goes back to that. Uh, the last question where we were talking about mm -hmm. whether you choose old or new gods and you were talking about things like social media and evolving and it feels like the more we evolve the more we're trying to use the new ways to get back to the old ways mm -hmm. so we're trying to find the social spaces and the basically we're trying to get back to the village but we're trying to use twitter and uh instagram or whatever to connect in that way so it would be interesting to see this kind of uh, a, a god that's uh, that kind of synthesis of uh, the old idea but in the new uh, way that we experience things it's like a switzerland god who just sits on the fence basically yes <laughs> well no i think what you're saying is using the um technology right. and the components that allow people to connect when they're not in the same physical space but using it in a responsible way 
to connect people as opposed to just output propaganda or information. Right, right, that there's actual heart and soul to it in, mm -hmm. in the way of the old gods. But I think you probably would just prefer a god of chocolate at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm just saying, I get asked, like, what would I be if I was a god? And I was like, the god of chocolate rules all. <laughs> Not if a bad I, god. <laughs> if I took chocolate away from this world, you would lose your mind. <laughs> the, the power I would have. That is true. <laughs> Yes, hi. Um, first off, I'm from Green Bay, so go Pack Go. <laughs> <laughs> Those are fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Dab brush. Well, I just told you where we'll be at the end of the month. I'm just saying. <laughs> Do you need me to point the directions? <laughs> I'm trying to give you a little boo -boo without actually saying boo boo. Because <laughs> I'll get uh uh. <laughs> and if you want that opportunity, don't get him. Uh -uh. I was trying to. Uh -uh. <laughs> Don't make him send her in. <laughs> Teats, get him. Joy, deal with his brother. <laughs> oh, you had a question. I thought we were just going to go somewhere. Oh, sweet cheeks. Steak. Oh, after all that? <laughs> <laughs> that was it? How'd you, how'd you get it? You know, it's not an easy business to break into. So right. what was your sort of oh, entry God. point? Oh, the, the entry point. It's funny. We were talking about all the uh, like odd jobs that we held you before did. we actually did that. And um, I actually, it's amazing being here in Chicago because I actually was here, what, about 10, 10 years ago was the last time I was here. Mm. And this is where I started in theater. Uh, you, she was nine. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ricky. I love you. Um, <laughs> I love you too. Um, but yeah, the, the Chicago theater is where I started. Places like Victory Gardens and um, um, Goodman and all of and Steppenwolf. Yeah. So it's 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 pretty surreal to be here now over here. It's like it's random. I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. Um, but the moment that actually sparked it was when I was growing up in Nigeria and my elders telling stories by the fire. And that was the moment that I knew that I wanted to tell stories. And as you can tell, I'm absolutely outgoing. Um, <laughs> I think Joy is a lot more outgoing than I am. Um, <laughs> I, I believe she's ingoing. <laughs> done. Oh. Done. Um, <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> but um, the sto stories was where, uh, were, were, were the places where I felt um, I could connect um, and I could um, share the ideas that that I was experiencing. So, <laughs> what I can see, I can see he's got something. He's no, about it's just, to you, just, you say such beautiful things and like quite literally. I was at university studying law, and like I got the opportunity to be on TV. I was like, I get so many chicks. <laughs> Like she's so like philosophical and she's like, oh, I wanted to tell stories and I want to inspire the world and the nation. I want to make little girls like have someone to be like. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> if I got on TV, <laughs> so many chicks would know who I am. <laughs> I could totally get Beyonce. <laughs> and it's not even, that's not even a lie, that's a true story. <laughs> Like, I was at university studying law, I got the opportunity. Um, I was modeling to pay for, you know, my school books and things like that. And my modeling agent would put me up for this show on, on uh, British TV, and the guy who, who was gonna eventually play my, play my dad was in the audition, well, that, well my callback. Um, I'd never, never acted before, apart from, like, school plays and stuff. Um, and so I was, like, really nervous, and the casting director, Val Ferran, um, who I'll always remember to the day I die, and, and Terrence Maynard, who played my dad in that show, they got me the job, they got me this career. Um, was like, I know you've never acted before, so just come in when you're ready, and I'll keep picking other people before you. And I passed about, you know, two, three, four times. She's like, are you ready? I'm like, she's like, no worries. And then eventually she was like, 
Are you ready? I was like, yeah, yeah. Went in. She, she, she loved it. She went, well done. I'll see you, uh, you know, in a couple of days, blah, blah, blah. Went into the audition with Terrence Maynard, who's, who they, they pair you up with different dads. So, like, it's like Father Sunday. You know, you're going, oh, he could be my dad. Well, he could be my dad. <laughs> be my stepdad. Um, <laughs> and then, like, Terrence did this one thing that pr probably got me the job. He terrified the crap out of me because he grabbed me and threw me against the wall mid-scene. And I didn't know you could touch people. <laughs> And like, he was like, oh, I was like, you got a bit of my nipple. It hurts so bad. So bad. And like, he scared the crap out of me in this scene. And then they were like, that was fantastic. I love your chemistry, Diana. You, you're doing really well. You've really come a long way. You look terrified. I was like, thank you. I worked, <laughs> I worked hard on that. And in fact. <laughs> And like, I didn't tell them until afterwards. I was like, you, dude, you can touch me? Like that, <laughs> that hurt, bro. Like, so Terrence Maynard got me my career, you know? I'll always, you know, have big props to, to, to the big guy for that. For grabbing your nipple. For grabbing my nipple. <laughs> All right, hi. Uh, the question I have is more about the There's so many elements in that. We've got an incredible post team. Yeah, VFX that, that, that team. Works. Our VFX is incredible. And of course, it took years to come to screen. The book was in 2001. People have tried to make this for a long time. It was with HBO. They missed out because uh, Stephanie Burke and Neil Gaiman didn't like their ideas and what they were trying to do. They wanted to make it into a movie, for starters. I mean, try, imagine trying to fit that book into, you know, hour and a half. It just right. doesn't happen. Um, so it really was a, a, a collaboration of minds between, you know, when Brian and, and Michael came in, who were very, you know, incredibly visual. David Slade was, was fantastic in, in, in and, uh, the, the cinematographer early vision. And the Joe Willems. Yep. The, yeah, the first they were, they were They were all fantastic. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And then uh, our, our producing director, Chris Byrne, um, who worked with Brian Fuller on Hannibal and worked on Star Trek as well. Would you know which episode it was? Uh, it was, it was the it was biggest, se it was, uh, seven, I seven, think it was episode, episode seven, seven, which was like an iconic <laughs> episode in the, Star, the new Star Trek series. Um, he's incredible. He's a genius. He's all those. It's a, it's a way of directing and, and, and shooting that I now notice and miss in anything else I watch. So you see when, when Laura's in the bath and she lights up a cigarette, any other show, she's in the bath and she lights up a cigarette. In our show, she lights up a cigarette, bang, crash zoom to the flame, <laughs> coming up. Mm -hmm. Intensity, you hear the sound. The sa that's another thing. Don't watch this show on your iPhone, on your iPad. You've got to watch it on a big screen. You've got to listen because they give you lots of clues in the, in the sound as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's almost like people have their own music. So, you know, when, when things are going, it's, there's so many Easter eggs just buried deep under all these layers. It's such an intelligent show. Um, but Chris Burns, obviously a huge part of that because He's worked with Brian. He's going to bring in that, you know, in, into season two as well, along with, you know, everyone that's right. And then I, I think we brought up uh, costumes and makeup. I mean, we had uh, at that point Sutrat Larlab, who was coming off of uh, Waitress on Broadway, and she put so she got much... an Emmy or a Globe. Uh, I think it might have been a Globe. Globe. So yeah, award winning. <laughs> award winning. <laughs> said Sutrat Larlab and, and, and Colin Penman. Every he's, yeah. he's got an Emmy as well. <laughs> yeah, Colin Penman. Award winning. Uh, award winning. <laughs> who did incredible things with the makeup. I mean, I remember even we did a lot of screen tests for that first appearance of Bill Quist yeah. because they said, okay, she needs to look run down. And so he would do run down. And then they say, well, but she needs to look like she's trying to be like on a date. Can, can we just say good. as well how long it took <laughs> run down, but to get good. your two days to look run down? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, right, we how, like, just put a bag on our head. <laughs> Because this is not going to work. Like, literally, they tried their best to try and make her not pretty, not glamorous, not charismatic. It's like, come on, guys. That was probably the best special effects on the whole show. <laughs> I agree. Hey. You answered a question. I answered a question. Spoiler. Oh. Just please talk about... I mean, Orlando, Orlando Jones. Jones.
as a Nancy, uh, one of the most amazing things on TV, I think, we saw He's incredible. last year. He should have been nominated for something just for that first speech alone. Right. The writing was incredible. His performance just blew us away. He got right. a standing ovation in the first rehearsal of that from all the extras. Right. Because it was during a very powerful emotional time where a lot of um, unarmed black men were getting shot by police in the back and things like that. And all, obviously on the slave ship, it's a lot of ethnicity on, that sl on the slave ship, uh, let's say. And it was just so beautifully written. And his performance just gave me chills mm -hmm. when I watched it. He's an incredible actor. But um, yeah, you're going to get to work with him uh, this year. How, how much Maybe. social responsibility do you guys feel being part of this show as actors? You know, it's not often that a project comes along that carries sort of the, the weight that, that something like American Gods does. I, th I think that's one of the things that attracted most of the, a lot of actors to the show. Um, there were a lot of uh, things that were prevalent uh, that are, um, that a lot of artists have something to say about. But at the end of the day, that's not all we were focusing on. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be that we, um, <clears throat> starting with Neil, with this book that he wrote, mm -hmm. hit on things that uh, were, were already coming to fruition. And so we happened to be in this really interesting space where we were at the top of the wave, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, I, and I'll speak only for myself there, that was one of the major things that drew me, um, was the, were, were the kinds of uh, stories we could tell there and the, the many issues that we could hit while doing something beautiful and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Just enjoy it. You, you take it or you don't. It, it doesn't, you don't have to believe in one thing or another. Just enjoy, enjoy some great actors doing some great stuff and some fun, you know. But at the same time, I feel we've got a great opportunity and platform to tell stories and educate and inform. We're not taking sides. We're giving a lot of different, you know, views and variety of, of, of things. Um, and it's, it's stuff that just needs to keep being talked about, you know. I, I feel sometimes we don't always keep moving forward, we keep taking back steps. And I feel as long as stuff's in conversation and we don't allow it to, to disappear, because that's the problem. We, we, we talk about things and we get all emotional and then stuff disappears and nothing changes. Whereas if we keep everything in conversation and we keep it in the headlines, you mm -hmm. know, I feel it allows us to keep moving in the right direction uh, and to keep that you know, kind of current. And, and eventually, you know, hopefully we can make the right choices and, and keep moving forward in the right direction. And I just feel like our show is unfortunately very current. I mean, Neil, Neil Gaiman wrote it as a fantasy and he said during the premiere in, um, in LA, he would give up all the fortune and fame that he's received if this book had stayed a fantasy. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it became very current. Um, it became very relevant in, in the times uh, last year. And we will be, because it's a controversial show sometimes, and we touch on sensitive subjects. But I think it's also the power of the show is that we're not shy to, we don't shy away from important things that, and stories that need to be told. You know, Musa, sorry, not Musa, that's the actor, but uh, Salim and Jin mm -hmm. was the first uh, homosexual love encounter between, that way. between yeah. two Muslims ever yeah. on TV uh, and it was it was a uh, boundary breaking why it's 2018 you know mm -hmm. this shouldn't be boundary breaking we should be just telling everyone's story you know I look around this room there is not one person that looks the same as the other person you know we're all individuals from different races religions you know sexes countries everything and the beautiful thing about these cons is like we all come together and we have fun and we just love life and look how much better it is to be at a convention than it is out on the street sometimes. And that's because everyone in here is just passionate and positive about the things that they, they you know, everyone can be themselves. You don't apologize. You can just have fun. You can just love what you love. You can dress up and look fantastic. You look fantastic. Everyone here looks great. Just loving life. And that's how life should be. But unfortunately on the street sometimes we're too afraid to, to be who we are because we don't fit into this and that. And I feel like the American gods continuing these kind of narratives and stories will keep those headlines in and show everyone that, you know what, if you don't know about this or that, this is what it is. You know, this show is educating me on so many different religions and, and histories and, and, you know, mythologies and things. So, so I'm learning a lot on this show and, and hopefully, you know, we can educate those who, who may need it. And your explanation is the perfect example of using the new gods to portray the message of the old gods. Just like that. Yeah. Yep. Hi. Of course, my lovely. Um, how does the big character for Lincoln and the final scene? 
the final scene was tough because I was so excited. <laughs> so excited to leave. Um, no, I'm joking. It was sad. No, it was, it was genuinely sad because I was leaving um, an incredible crew, an incredible cast that I loved dearly and I wanted to stay with. Um, but I will never sit in a, in a negative situation and no one should ever have to sit in a negative situation. Always be strong enough to stand up for yourself, to stand up for others that can't. Um, I'll always do that, I'll continue to do that till the day I die. Um, but it made it so easy because I was, I was leaving people I really liked. And so you kind of use those substitutions and those emotions and bring them in. The only, the only bad thing is, is that I was working with Mike Beach who played Pike, who's the nicest, funniest, most awesome dude in the world, who shoots me in the head, by the way. Um, <laughs> But he's so cool, and we had such a giggle and such a laugh. Um, and, we, and, and so it made it hard to kind of just like zone in and stay focused. But afterwards, there was tears, and everyone was crying. The crew were crying, and I was like, I was fine. I was like, I'm, I'm going to American Gods. I got my own show. See ya. Don't, don't feel bad for me. You see my bank account. <laughs> I didn't. I was joking. That was just for comedy value. <laughs> No, um, but yeah, so as soon as they started crying, I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to miss you too. <laughs> Don't cry, because now you're going to make me do it. So it was really, it was, it was really emotional, um, but it was because it came from a real place, you know, um, and that was a character I very much loved, that I feel was so undervalued and under, underused, but for obvious reasons that I don't need to talk about. Um, and, you know, to the point that he could have had his own show. He was, there was so much depth there, and he could have done so much with, with the grounders, with, you know, this, this is the only moral character on the show. How can you not explain that? You know, you want to know why he always made the right decision, constantly making sacrifices for the woman he loved, and for people he didn't even know. You know, he died in the end for no reason, for grounders who were never named or you never saw again. Um, why? And it would have been nice to investigate all that kind of stuff. But um, I'll always love that character. He's awesome awesome character and i'll always love the fans who connected with him despite him literally being made so insignificant tried to be hide him in the corner but you always saw him and that's why i've always got such a huge appreciation for the hundred fandom who always see me and so i'll always see you because you kept me happy in a very very tough time a very negative time um and so i'll always hold on to that love and i'll always be grateful for that Questions? Yes. Buffalo, right, Ricky? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm glad I wore a tank because it's going to get warm. <laughs> <laughs> so this was my first ever experience on green screen, blue screen. And so let's talk about the buffalo scene. Yeah. Right. So they, the, our set is incredible. Our, our crew just made this incredible like cave that came out into a tree. Okay. It wasn't that tree that was magnificent, spectacular. It was like a little block thing with a <laughs> couple of pathetic like... <laughs> Like a, kind of like a coat rack. So it was a coat, exactly. It's like a coat rack and it was like, so this is a tree, right? It's a big tree. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's big tree. It's the famous tree. I was like, all right, well, it's not in the book, so I don't, there's no pictures. What, what does it look like? Oh, it's just, it's, it's a big tree. Okay, got it. So you've got to literally go into your childhood, your little cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians and like imagination and just go, all right, forget it. Let's do this. The director's on the side, David Slade. And, every, and so here you go. You're walking through. You, oh, and they cut out the bit. They had me crawling through that cave, like through like all these thorns and puddles, which they cut out. I cut the heck out of my hands, and they cut that out. You don't realize what I give them in this show. It got cut out. Didn't even make the bloopers. The bonus material on the DVD, which is available on Amazon and any. And, 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 um, and so like, I'm crawling through and the director's like, okay, okay, get up now, you see the tree. And I'm like, 
okay, there's a tree. It's strange. Because this is in my dream sequence. I'm like, okay, it's strange. I'm still because he's not questioning why he's like seeing a tree and on his own and stuff. He just fell asleep in a hotel. Why the hell is he now in a field? Roofied. Um, <laughs> And so he's getting up and it's like, oh, there's a tree, there's a tree, it's magnificent. It's so big, it's bigger than that, taller, taller, taller. It's so <laughs> wide, oh, wide. Both sides, oh, it's so <laughs> huge, massive. And there's a buffalo behind the tree, <laughs> behind the tree. It's walking towards you, okay. And it's got flame in its eyes, ooh. It's coming towards you slowly, crawling all over those, those, those skulls. Oh, there's skulls. Oh, skulls. But the buffalo, the buffalo, okay, he's walking towards you now. He's getting real close. No, he's big. Oh, he's a big buffalo. He's a big buffalo. A bit lower. Okay, that, that's... No, you're looking at his nose. Can we give me a tennis ball or something? Okay, we go. But I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. I'm still there. Okay, buffalo. Okay, okay. You don't know what's going on. He's gonna bite you. He's gonna rush you. He says, "Believe." Who oh, believe? It can speak. <laughs> Cut. Right? And then they go, don't worry, we'll make you look real good in post. <laughs> and you're like, thanks. <laughs> and you're just sat there going, I'm never going to work again. <laughs> that is the best description I've ever heard of working with a green screen, don't you guys think? <laughs> you guys are awesome. So awesome. Are you here all day and tomorrow? The rest of the They day? won't let us go. <laughs> You guys, make sure you go down and visit with Bricky and Yite Day. You guys, thank you so much. One more big round of thank applause. You so much. Woo! American Gods! Double!